Hey, good day, everybody. This is Dennis with Team JAG out of Salem, Oregon. I work out of uh, Wallace Marine Park, a wonderful uh, facility. If you ever get a chance to officiate there, please do so. Jump all over that. Main reason is you've got Team JAG out there, uh, headed up by founder John Garrett. Uh, John is a uh, longtime Pac-12 evaluator, longtime USA uh, softball official, umpire in chief and soon to be a Hall of Famer in the Pacific Northwest region in 2021. John's an exceptional UIC, uh, one of those guys that uh, if you're doing something wrong, he's probably going to see it. Uh, and a USA Softball, thank you very much. Again, this is uh, not again, but uh, this was picked up uh, in uh, the National Umpire School out of Auburn, Washington, this PowerPoint in uh, January, February of 2020, just before COVID. So thank you, USA Softball, great job. And great job to the Auburn, uh, Washington uh, group. They put on a wonderful two-day uh, National Umpire School. All right, let's get it on. All right, so getting started, we're going to jump into four key things to remember in the three umpire system. We'll start with a little bit of rotation. Uh, number one, rotation in the three umpire system is always in a clockwise direction. So here we've got our uh, three umpires, U1, U3, and the plate. Uh, and the rotation is always clockwise. Uh, first is going to come home, uh, plate's going to go to third, and the third base umpire is going to go to second, maybe first, depending on the play. Uh, but uh, more importantly, it's always in a clockwise direction. Again, really simplifies it. You're going to go clockwise uh, and uh, in the three umpire system. Number two, when the umpires start from a counter-rotated position, you will not rotate. So bottom line is that if you're counter-rotated, and there's our, our, our blue uh, and just behind the second baseman, uh, they are counter rotated. You've got a runner on second base and then you've got the U3 off of third, but you're counter rotated. So therefore there is no rotation. U1 is going to pick up first and second. Uh, U3 is going to uh, have responsibility for third. Uh, and uh, the plate is going to obviously take care of the plate, but you're going to stay home. So as you pre-pitch, uh, prepare, pre-pitch preparation, uh, remind yourself that you're counter-rotated and you will not rotate when you're in this position. All right, number three. When a base umpire goes to the uh, outfield, the crew reverts to a two-umpire system. So there's our U1 and U3 highlighted there. When it, Let's just say that U1 is going to go out. U3 cuts across the diamond, picks up the batter runner. How come? Because you're in a two-man, two-umpire system. Uh, likewise, if U3 goes, then U1 has responsibility to cut in, button hook in, and take that batter runner all the way to third base. How come? Because we're in a two umpire system. That really makes it easy. Uh, so bottom line is that uh, when you go to the outfield, uh, you're in a two umpire system. Number four, when a base umpire goes to the outfield, uh, not only are you in a two umpire system, but that umpire should remain outside and allow the ball to turn them back to the infield and observe the remainder of the play. Bottom line, if you go out, stay out. You do want to be a second set of eyes for your two-man crew, uh, but don't uh, come back into the infield. Stay out. Again, be a second set of eyes and observe uh, the remainder of the play in case uh, you, need, uh, you need some help. So if you go out, you're going to stay out. All right, just to kind of rehash the four keys uh, to remember in the three-umpire system, and it's pretty much this simple. Uh, always rotate clockwise. When you're counter-rotated, do not rotate. When one base umpire goes out in a fly ball or base hit, you revert to the two-man system. And when you go out, you stay out. All right, so let's jump into fly ball coverage uh, with no runners on uh, in the three-man uh, three umpire system. You'll see U1 and U3 at first and third, 18 to 21 feet off the line in foul territory. They're going to creep on the pitch. Uh, but uh, bottom line, uh, they're going to split the outfield and split the fly ball coverage. So the U1's got everything uh, to the right of the center fielder all the way to uh, the dead ball territory along the first base line. And U3 in the blue here has everything to the left of the center fielder, again, splitting the field with U1. Uh, U3's also got the uh, third base uh, fair foul call as they uh, go out on that, uh, on that type of play. Plate has the plate, of course, uh, but uh, mainly uh, any pop up on the infield. Uh, so again, we're just going to split the field, uh, and uh, you'll see U1 with the red, U3's got the blue, uh, and uh, of course they've got the first base and third base lines, and the plate just has any pop-up on the infield. Uh, all right, let's take a look at runners on uh, first base. 
Uh, there's our U1. There's our runner on first base. U3 is now moved over behind second base, uh, 12 to 15 feet off the base there. And uh, so what's the fly ball coverage here? Well, again, somewhat intuitive. I mean, bottom line is you can see U3 is going to have that center field area. U1 is going to have the right field line. Uh, the plate's going to have the left field line. So let's take a look at that. U1, red area. Um, you've got the right fielder all the way to the dead ball uh, territory, meaning you've got fair foul down the first base line. U3 uh, has the center cone, uh, as they call it, left fielder to the right fielder. So anything hit in that area out there, U3 is going to go. And of course, the plate has the uh, left field line in this situation. How come? Because U3 is all the way over behind second base. So the plate's got the left field, uh, fair or foul, uh, and any pop up uh, on the infield. So again, um, pretty intuitive. Uh, red is the U1 right fielder. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, right fielder all the way dead ball territory. Uh, uh, U3's got the center cone and then the plate's got the left field line. Uh, and that is uh, with uh, U3 behind second base. So again, pretty intuitive. Let's take a, a look now. Uh, U1 is in that counter rotated position uh, off of second, uh, the second baseman. You can see our runner there on second base only. So we're counter rotated. Uh, and uh, so what's the fly ball coverage? Again, um, it, it, it'll make sense as you map it out here. You'll see U1's already out towards center field. So they're going to pick up left field to the right field. That ball's hit in that uh, area out there. U1 is going. You're back in the two-man situation. U3 is going to cut across, to, um, pick up the batter runner. Uh, but more importantly, U1's got that center field cone. Uh, U3's got the left field cone. Um, not really a cone, maybe the rectangle, but... From the left field, uh, left fielder all the way to dead ball territory, fair and foul down the, the third baseline. Of course, the plate uh, has um, uh, the right fielder all the way to dead ball territory uh, and any pop up on the infield. Uh, so again, uh, here it is. Red U1 has got the center field cone. U3 has got the left field uh, foul line, a left fielder to dead ball area. Plate's got right field foul line. You want to be careful. Uh, when you're counter rotated like this as you want if that ball is hit to the right field and you see it curving uh, Towards the right field line don't don't go that's the plates ball We see that often where you one will take off but then the ball arcs back towards the right field line and you're out of position um, Blue of course U three has that left fielder and then the plates got everything down the right field line So that is with a runner on second base all right, let's take a look now at a runner at first and third. We're still kind of rotated. Uh, you'll see the umpire now shading uh, towards first base uh, a little bit, um, a little bit more than they were with the runner on second. But uh, the fly ball coverage doesn't change that much. You've got the red area center field cone. U three's got the blue area plate's got the uh, down uh, the right field line. So again, uh, I don't. I hate to keep saying intuitive. It, Kind of is. Uh, U1's already out there. U3's on the uh, left field line. And then the plate, of course, has the first base all the way down. Um, now we've got a runner on second, third. Uh, and my U1 moved over to the second base side of the second baseman. Uh, and uh, same same fly ball coverage. Um, and so center fielder, I'm sorry, left fielder to the right fielder is U1. U3's got the blue cone. Plate's got the, uh, the teal looking area down the right field line. So again, counter rotated. U1's got the center field area. So, you know, there's not a lot of uh, variances in fly ball coverage, um, depending on where you're at. There's only three choices. Um, and uh, study it, make sure that you pre-pitch it, uh, and uh, make sure you know what your responsibilities are in the, um, the three-man uh, rotation in regards to fly ball coverage. Bases loaded, same thing. Uh, U1 is uh, toward the second base side. Uh, and uh, the uh, fly ball coverage, the zones for U1, U3, and the plate do not have not changed. How come you're kind of rotated? U1 is out there, makes sense. Um, again, be careful with that ball that sneaks down the right field line, kind of arcs back. Uh, stay where you're at if you're U1. Plate's got, uh, plate has that for sure. All right, so let's take a look at some rotations. Here we're going to start with no runners on, and the ball is going to be hit to the infield. Uh, I want you to key on U3. Uh, that's the rabbit, as they call it. Rabbit's going to jet across the infield. Uh, and stay, um, get that nice uh, leading edge uh, to second base. Uh, and the reason is if that um, batter runner goes to second base, then it's used, U3 uh, has the play at second. Uh, U1's going to uh, read the play, sneak towards home. Uh, the plate's going to uh, rotate towards third if the play calls for it. But bottom line, I think in this play with no runners on, uh, look for that U3 to cut across, look at that position, uh, watch U1 
uh, get into that standard uh, 45, if you will. So here we go. Ball is uh, pitched and, of course, hit to the infield. And there goes you three. And then a very simple play over to first base. U1 has that call. Notice that nice little 45 that the U1 has. Essentially standard first base kind of call. Uh, notice the plate comes out, trails the batter runner. But more importantly, look at that rabbit. Uh, so, if you know, nobody on. Any, anytime the ball is hit to the infield, uh, bottom line is that rabbit, U3 has got to get across, the uh, not across, but get to second base uh, and um, get that nice leading edge so they can uh, pick up that batter runner if by chance uh, they go to second base. All right, so now we got a runner on first base, and uh, I want you to take a look at U3. They're behind second base, uh, and uh, 12 to 15 feet, 90 degree uh, angle behind second base. Basically, they're waiting for that steal, and all they have to do is kind of pivot into the uh, towards second base and make that nice call. But U3 is behind second base with a runner on first base, uh, and so ball's going to go to the outfield. It's going to be a base hit, so you're going to see that runner on first go to third. What I want you to key on is watch uh, the uh, plate umpire. Watch their mechanic. Uh, I want you to take a peek at U1 also because they're going to cover home plate on this. So let's go ahead and pitch the ball. Again, ball's going to be hit to the outfield. That uh, runner on first base is going to go to third. Batter runner is going to uh, take off. Uh, but again, uh, key on uh, the plate umpire. Watch them make the call at third base and also take a look at what U1 does. So here we go. Ball's hit to the infield. I'm sorry, to the outfield. Uh, there's U3 coming over the nice play at third base. Make the call look safe to me, maybe out. Um, but notice, uh, of course, that uh, the plate uh, has that call at third base and they are inside the diamond. Uh, notice that U1 is now behind the plate in that nice position uh, that USA Softball wants you to be at uh, for any plays at the plate. And then uh, U3 now has a responsibility for the batter runner in any play at first or second. So really cool rotation there. And you got to read that as U1. Uh, when that runner clears, um, that uh, leading runner clears second base and they're going to third, that's the plate's call at third. And you, as the U1, have to sneak back and get behind the plate in case the ball sneaks by. And I can promise you it will. Ball gets by the third baseman. Uh, that batter runner is going to come home and you have to be there in that nice position. And um, nothing more rewarding in a three-man system when a rotation like this uh, works. So read it uh, and uh, a key off of it and uh, just be ready to stop. Uh, read the play and make the call. All right, now we got bases loaded. Uh, first thing I want you to notice, of course, is that we are counter rotated. Notice that U1 is on the second base side of the second baseman. Got bases loaded here, uh, and um, the ball is going to be hit to the outfield. No umpire is going to go out. Maybe it was just on the ground. Uh, and uh, so, bottom line is the umpires are not going to go in this situation. And um, but uh, so their responsibilities are going to be to uh, handle first and second and third. No one's going to rotate, uh, so let's fire it up. So here's the pitch, and now there's a ball hit to the outfield. Uh, and um, there we go. You saw that U1 uh, button hooked in, as did U3 uh, on that play. Uh, and then the ball came back to, uh, of course, the second uh, uh, base, uh, came to second base, and that U1 has that nice leading edge there to make that call as that um, that particular runner gets back to second base on the nice play. So no rotation there. Everybody stays home. Plate's got the plate. U3's got U3. U3's got U3. U3's got third base. Uh, and, of course, U1 is responsible for first and second base. All right. Uh, base is loaded uh, now, and the ball's going to be hit to the infield. So uh, bottom line, you're not going. Ball's hit to the infield. All you're going to be doing is uh, staying um, out. Ball's hit in. You're going to stay out. Uh, and so let's watch what happens here. Here's the um, here's the pitch. You're counter rotated, uh, and the ball is hit to the infield uh, over there. And you see U1 just move back and make that nice call. Uh, uh, nobody rotated home. Uh, don't get too nervous. You can see that U3 steps in uh, into fair territory there. They've got that pickoff uh, back pick at third base. Plate's got the plate. You're counter rotated. So again, not again, but. You know, just read the play. Bottom line is U1's got first and second. U3's got three and plate has the plate. All right, uh, no runners on. Fly ball uh, to the outfield. U1 is going to go. So you're going to notice that U1 is going to go to the outfield. Not deep. Uh, you don't need to go way out there. You want to run parallel to the flight of the ball, uh, depending on where the ball's hit, of course. If it's down the line, tough to go parallel, but you'll want to get on that line to make that nice fair or foul call. But U1 is going to go. 
uh, in this situation and watch uh, you three uh, hopefully cut across the field. So here we go. Here's the pitch. And then the ball is hit to the outfield. U1 goes. And then notice uh, how quickly that rabbit at third base has to get across. Now, they stopped halfway uh, right there, split the circle there. How come? Because if that runner takes off the second base for some reason, uh, they're ahead of the runner, U3 uh, is in the two-man system, uh, did not go all the way to first base. How come? Because they read the play. They saw the ball was coming into second base. There's no need for that U3 to cut all the way across. Had there been a play at first base, then uh, U3 is expected to get across there, stop, uh, read the play, and make the call. Uh, so that is uh, with uh, U1 uh, going uh, on a, uh, a shot to the outfield. No runners on, um, and the fly ball uh, to the outfield, U3 is going to go. So here's the pitch. Uh, and this is, you know, nice, uh, you know, again, when you go, you're into a two-man system here. Uh, so you're going to see U3 take off on this, uh, on this hit, uh, and you're simply in a two-man system. So here we go. There's a ball rope to the left field. You see the out, uh, the uh, U3 uh, go out there. Uh, and uh, apparently the ball was a base hit. Play at second base, and notice that U1 simply followed the batter runner. Got that nice leading edge and made the call at uh, at second base on this play. Uh, so uh, again, U3 goes. You're a two-man system. Notice that the plate umpire is in a nice holding uh, zone um, off of, in between home and third over there. Uh, and uh, U1 uh, in this situation has the batter runner all the way to third base. Uh, how come? Because you're in a two-man system. Uh, and that is the, uh, the last runner to third base. And so the U1 is going to take that uh, batter runner uh, all the way to third base. But it, more importantly, notice that U3 uh, took off uh, and we're in a two-man system. The plate's yelling two-man. You're yelling going if you're the U3. Um, even U1 is yelling two-man, two-man. Communicate uh, for sure. All right, now we got a runner on uh, second base. Uh, and um, and first base, first and second. Fly ball goes to the outfield. Notice that U3 is going to go on this play. So here's the pitch. Nope, that's not the pitch. That's my phone. <laughs> Hello, leave me alone. Um, so here's the pitch. And uh, bottom line, uh, it's going to be a shot uh, to left field, or, and U3 is going to go. You're in a two-man situation here. Uh, when U3 goes on this play, I want you to uh, make sure you, you follow that runner on second base there. And... Uh, uh, U1 is going to come in because the ball is hit to the outfield and they have responsibility for that runner at first and the batter runner. Who's got that runner on second base? The plate. How come? It's the leading uh, runner uh, to third base uh, and uh, not the last runner, but the leading runner. So in a two-man situation, that play uh, when the ball is hit to the outfield is the plate. So you'll see the plate come up and take that call at third base. You'll see U1 um, button hook in. Uh, U3 is going to go on this. So here's the shot. Uh, notice that U3 goes. There's a play at third base. You're in a two-man uh, umpire uh, situation uh, at this point here. Uh, again, notice that you, uh, you, the plate is um, is on that leading edge off of third base inside the diamond, making that nice call. And U1, of course, has uh, responsibility for the batter runner and uh, that uh, runner at second base. So that's when U3 uh, goes. All righty, it's, it's that easy. Um, and, you know, it's not as difficult as some uh, new umpires think. It just you, you don't work three-man, so uh, you have to learn it, uh, just like you had to learn two-man. Uh, but go through the keys. Make sure you understand the four key uh, elements uh, of a three-man. Make sure you know your fly ball coverage, and, and make sure you understand your general rotation uh, and simplify things such as if you're kind of rotated, uh, you, don't, you don't rotate home, if you will. Um, I'd like to thank uh, USA Softball, the National Umpire School out of Auburn, Washington in 2020. Great job, guys. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, reach us uh, on Facebook at Jag Softball. we got some other videos coming, a documentary series called The Art of Umpiring. Uh, more on that later. Uh, but uh, thanks for spending some time with us on the three-man system. <laughs>